I'm going to move this down. I'm going to show you a presentation to give you a little idea about techniques in photography. And like all good presenters, I'm going to start this presentation from the beginning. So, still and video camera techniques. This is very much goes to both still photography and video. We're going to talk today a little bit about types of shots, how to lead the viewer, composition, the rule of thirds, different parts of an image, frame, framing a subject, and being aware. And as you know, I don't normally read my presentations, but this is the type of presentation I will do a little more reading of what you see on the screen. But um, it helps before you go out to take pictures, because I'm giving you a, an assignment. Because we're gonna next time we come in, you're going to be editing those images. But I want you to edit images with some education behind it. So the different types of shots. We have long shots, medium shots, short shots, and close-up. Now, if you've ever had a film class, these terms you're familiar with. And if you ever took photography, you would be familiar with these terms. But let's look at them. This is a long shot. The subject's far away from the camera. So what is my subject? Correct. Correct. The subject is the boat. So in long shots, it usually helps to have something here in the foreground that frames what's in the background. And this time, the background is my subject. So foreground is what area? Yeah, the palm trees, the walkway. Yeah. And the background is the sky in the building. And the mid-ground is the boat, which is really my subject. Mm -hmm. So a medium shot is the subject's closer to the camera. It's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. Photography is very logical and very common sense. So that's a medium shot. Short shot. It's not a close-up. It's a short. It's, it's closer than the medium, but further away than the close-up. So there's the close-up. And that's not even, that's not macro photography, that's close-up. Macro is even, is, is getting in almost microscopically. You would see every little hair of this uh, part of the plant. So the subject's extremely close, and it's a more detailed viewpoint. Leading the viewer. Putting your subject in the center of the frame is what most amateurs do, and it's boring as the viewer. Now, I want you to control the way the people look at your images. So I want you to lead the viewer's eyes around the frame. So here's your frame. That's your viewfinder. We're going to lead people in, out, up, and down. So into the frame, people will look into your frame. What are you looking into here? What makes you look at something? What's my subject? The flower. OK. So are you looking, the first thing you see is the flower or the lily pads? The flower. And you're leading into it. <coughs> because of that whiteness of the flower against the green of the uh, lily pads. My subject is off-center. Each of the quadrants, you do the little tic-tac-toe, I'm in the right side, but lower, I'm not up, I'm not in the center section, I'm in the combination of the two. This is placement of your subject. Now, Lee, sorry. Are you saying uh, you're leading the viewer in because of the way I'm looking down at it and the contrast between the colors. Yeah. Now, the way the person's positioned here, are they going into the frame, out of the frame, out of, up the frame, or down the frame? Well, they're going out. Okay, I know it sits there, but I, you know, you're going out of the frame here. Now, if we're leading up, I'm at a low camera angle looking up 
So the viewer does the same. <coughs> Here we go. I'm at a high camera angle looking down. So the viewer is looking down. There's another way to look at this, a compositional rule called the rule of thirds. You divide it with the tic-tac-toe. My subject is not necessarily that paw that's directly in the center. It's the cute little face of the bear. That's the subject, is that face. Now, secret. Always focus on people's eyes or animals' eyes. Anything that has eyes, that's what should be in focus. Now, with your auto focus cameras, the point and shoot, it's a little hard to do, but your cameras, most of them have a setting where you could move a little uh, LED digital light into a particular area to focus in, and we can look at those individually if you have those settings. But rule of thirds, it's the place, is the way you place your subject. My subject is not in the center. He's off center. So here we go through the foreground. I'm framing my subject here with a building. My subject is not this framed building, this window I'm looking through. What's my subject? It, it's a snow scene. That's my subject. So the mid-ground is where, really where the subject is. The background's the sky, and the foreground is the framing device that I'm using. And I draw you in to the photo. It's so hard to, you know, to take that picture because you're in a darker area going into light. No, because you're fo the darker area will be dark just like my, it is for me. You're going to really see the light area, which you see here. So, framing the image, foreground framing. I use windows, walkways, arches, I could use plants. You want to draw people in. That also leads them in. Now, awareness. Look to see what is in the photographic frame. Whether you're looking through the window of your camera or you're looking through the viewfinder, if you see a pole coming out of someone's head, just step from one on a side and that pole shifts. But watch. You know, some things are just snapshotty. And if you're shooting a little kid, get what you could get. But if you could control it or you could take some time and be patient, I can't use this shot of Billy Williams. Outside of on um, it's still under his, under a baseball hat will always be a darker shadow. Um, you have to fill flash on that. So here, there's something called an arabesque. You connect two compositions together. You have the brick wall, walkway, you have the building, and you have a bridge that connects these two compositions like taking a bowl of fruit and putting an apple on the table next to the fruit, you then have two separate compositions. But if you take a banana and it connects from the fruit in the, bat, in, in the bowl to the apple, that's the arabesque and it connects the two compositions and pulls it together. So I am I'm basically have been talking about thinking planning, observing, and being patient with your photography. These are the requirements of taking good photos. And I just went through my whole photo one. In photo one, when I taught photography, they had to do each and every one of those assignments. And my digital students do that. They do a leading the viewer. They do a composition. They do a lighting. And we haven't even talked about lighting yet. And that's the next thing. And I'm going to 